auditory imagination looks like hearing a sound in your head without there really being an external stimulus that you're responding to. So that could look like trying to remember what your friends told you at lunch, or if, for example, when I compose music, I'm constantly trying to imagine what something would sound like before I write it down on the page. And it's something we don't always think about, but we do it constantly. Our project is called Auditory Imagery of Speech and Non-Speech Sounds. And what we're really focusing on is trying to see whether EEG or electroencephalography can be used to distinguish between the imagination of different categories of sound. Part of our project is developing a machine learning algorithm in order to classify whether the sounds that a person is imagining are human speech or non-human sounds. Studying auditory imagery not only helps to further our understanding of related cognitive processes such as memory because when you are imagining a sound you are drawing upon your memory for that sound but it also has the possible impact to inform algorithms for brain computer interfaces even possibly for individuals who are severely paralyzed and have difficulty with communicating because if we can learn how to distinguish what category of sound a person is imagining, we can um, further our understanding of what it looks like to imagine speech in the brain, and then possibly be able to translate a person's thoughts into actual communication. We first train participants to associate a visual shape with an auditory sound. Um, so it could be like square means the sound of a chicken. And we literally play them the sound of a chicken. And then we test them on that imagination. And we just show them the shape, and we ask them to imagine the sound. And we record the data both for imagination and perception of the sound. There were some differences that we saw that we could just see through statistical analyses, but we didn't find it for every category. But then looking at the machine learning results, we were really excited because um, this high accuracy comparing speech versus non-speech for both the animal and artificial sounds was very high. And um, that was pretty exciting for us. The more that I study music, the more that I study hearing and sound, the more interested and fascinated and passionate I become about those topics. I feel so emotionally driven by music and knowing that that is created by a neural pathway um, doesn't really make it any less emotional for me. Like I feel like the explainability of something doesn't necessarily take away its magic.